it's gonna be a good project. So here we have the Neo and we've pulled it apart. To get it out of the car, what we've done is taken off the top clamshell of the plenum chamber. So the plenum chamber comes across with these six fingers into this double and then into a single piece. That's how the Neos operate on these things. There's really good advantages to running this thing. Nissan have put a lot of R&D research and development into these designed manifolds. So some of the positive things they have is they're all tuned length, right? So the amount of air coming in gets distributed equally to each cylinder very good for tuning but there is a few downsides with the fingers coming over like this it is very difficult to get to your injector rail to any wiring loom and bits and pieces because you've got to then disassemble your whole clamshell to get to it here we have the forward facing plumbing which we're going to be running now this one here also has equal length tuned pipes to the plenum so with the air coming in the front here and then getting distributed the back cylinders can lean out a little bit but you're only talking in super high horsepower applications when you're really pushing it, trying to squeeze it. That's why the GDR had individual throttle butterflies, was to try and negate that so you've got equal flow to the butterfly right before the intake. In order to put this forward facing plenum on, we're going to be cleaning up a lot of this stuff, which means we're going to be shifting a fuel pressure regulators, we're going to be shifting a whole bunch of these coolant hoses which go to various places. It's quite a mess in the standard setup, but it will be much more simplified once the new fruit's installed. So we're gonna to get to work now and uh, you'll see what it looks like pulling all this stuff off. So we're just test fitting this manifold and we've come across one issue already. The pipe here that goes through to the other side, I think it's for the blow off valve. It comes out here, it's just a, just an air pressure line. It's not required because the manifold's changed. So that's actually stopping it from going all the way. So you've actually got a clearance issue right here. So we're just gonna have to remove that pipe for the manifold to be able to sit right up and then we should be good to go. Another thing that we won't need is this bracket right here. Now the thing I really love about the RBs is when you put something like this into a more simple car that you can get rid of all of this stuff and just have this really clean looking motor. So it'll be beautiful when it's all done and we've only got the things we need on there and not excess stuff like this or the bracket over here that we cut out before, which actually makes them look really, really nice in the car. We got to the point where we've just taken the gearbox off and now we're just about to disassemble the clutch. It's very important to symmetrically take off the bolts opposites when you're doing it. If you need to clean your engine, and you haven't got a way of doing it, there is a little hack that we used, right? So what we did is put the engine, we put it on the crane, we put it onto the trailer, and we went and bought some degreaser, cans of degreaser stuff, and then we <laughs> sprayed it, and we just blasted the whole thing. What we did was taped up all the integral parts of the engine with red tape, just to make sure nothing got water in where it should have got in. Very important to note, when you have put water on your engine and stuff like this, and cleaned it right out, if you're gonna do it that way, be very careful get an air compressor and blow everything out. It's looking really, really clean. It's starting to look like a project I'm gonna get excited about because it's, you know, just looking good. So we then came home <laughs> and got stuck into it while I had to help, I had a mate here. So we basically got the plenum chamber all put on with all the gasket uh, redone. We've cleaned the surfaces and now we've put that on. We've also been out to get some more parts. We had some issues with our injectors. I wanna show you the injectors. So here's what we had. We had 1,000 cc injectors that were on this manifold on the 2530. There's a bit of a difference in size, right? So 
when you're comparing the injectors side by side, it's basically the flange, it's a universal type injector. Look at the back of the injector, you can see the 1000cc is about twice the size of the 500 odd cc. And there's also a different spray pattern too. So you've got four little orifices it's going to spray from, and then this one here you've got a single orifice it's going to spray from. But we'll have to see what's better with a flow pattern. And if you guys know in the comments what the difference in spray pattern are, or what the efficiency is on those spray patterns, I'd love to know. It's got a green o-ring there which is for E85 approved fuels, right? So in this manifold here, if you come and have a look in here, you'll be able to see that there is, along these parts here, a big recess and a small recess. I don't know if you can see it too well in there, but in the big recesses here, uh, it's sat in there like that. With the standard injector, they didn't really fit into that little small recess before. They were very loose, and that was because I was just test fitting them with the original O-rings. What we've gone and done is gone down to Sprint Autos and found the right O-rings so we can get them in there, and then we can put the nice new fuel rail on. We've also taken the water pump off, and to do that, we've had to take off the tensioner pulleys and the idler pulley for the timing belt. So I've lined up the timing on top dead center, got all the marks marked here, got everything marked out so that when we put it back together, we shouldn't have any problems. It'll just start and run exactly like it was before it was in the car. So we've got an N1 water pump here, which has actually got the smaller blades and more of them. So I suppose you could say this is a little bit of a performance upgrade, but it's an ancillary support upgrade for performance. So it's not gonna give us any more power, it's just gonna be able to help us sustain that power efficiently. So there's the old water pump. The bearing feels a little bit rubbish. These are recommended to be changed about every 100,000 kilometers by Nissan. It's a 100, part of the 100,000 kilometer genuine Nissan service kit if you are interested in knowing how the frequency of these have changed. Now, these water pumps have come a long way because when I was a kid, right, my dad had this old EJ Holden with a 186 red motor in it. And we were doing water pumps every 10,000 or so kilometers on that car. And I was always wondering, why are we doing so many water pumps? You know, like, even as a, a young kid thinking about cars and how to improve stuff, it was always like, why is this so frequent but other cars aren't that frequent? And uh, the answer was because it had a metal fan on the front of the water pump. And those metal fans weren't balanced. And they would just create a lot of vibrations, which would put a lot of stress onto the, the pulley. And that would in turn wear the bearing out. So if you actually take off the metal fan and put on like a, an electric thermo fan, you're going to pick up a few extra horsepower in gains because you're not sending that to the front to turn the fan. So you're going to in increase your efficiency there as well as, you know, increase the life of your water pump and all the front end gear on your idlers and things that are attached to that same connecting pulley, maybe like your generator or your alternator. In the case of the EJ, we used to run a generator. A uh, generator was basically <laughs> only charging when you got more RPM into it and it didn't charge at a very high rate. So for example, when you're driving at night with a generator, your headlights would dim when you put the wiper blades on. Mum's just bought us out some snacks. Um, <laughs> For, for us here while we're doing this because we've been working on this for so many hours. Oh, she got, she got little chocolates. Little chocolates. Oh, look at this. And check out the mug. Check out the mug she's got. Nothing, oh, nothing but the favorite, best. Favourite mug there. Have a real good look at that. That's the EK Holden. So that's another project we're currently doing up in the shed. And uh, that's something that we are working towards. And that's another really interesting car. You can check out my YouTube channel if you want to see a bit more of that. We'll put something in the comments below where you can go and see that. While we've been talking away and gas bagging, <laughs> we've been fitting this water pump. So just getting all the bolts in and then we'll go and talk it up. One of the main things you're going to want to do is replace your timing belt. There's huge cracks. Get yourself the aftermarket timing belt. The Gates high performance timing belt. This is three times stronger. Um, this is not product placement or anything. They just make a really strong timing belt. He's gone. <laughs> Here we go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the brand new idler. The idler only has one position. This tensioner has a little bit of a, it's got a bit of a spring that stays coiled in there. That spring gives you a little bit of pullback on the tensioner. Now it's time for an unboxing. I don't know who gets excited about this sort of stuff, but apparently a lot of kids are making a lot of money 
out of unboxings. There you go. Look at this beautiful belt, silicon backed. Looks great. You know, absolutely amazing bit of kit. Way better and superior than what we had before. That's going to line up. There's a mark right there. There's a mark right there, and there's a mark right there at the back. This is the first time I've actually seen a belt marked with the exact position the belt's meant to be located in. So well done to them. So today, we're back at it again, and we're gonna be tidying up the engine bay. So this car had previously been running on an E85 and fitted with a 2530, as you know, and it had a lot of interesting stuff fitted. So here we've got a Gretti dual stage boost control that was fitted, it was wired in, and there's boost lines going all over the place. There is more boost lines over here. There is some wiring for the flex fuel sensor, which I've undone back from the firewall, and you have a look at how long this is crazy long uh, so we're going to be removing all of that now one thing i wanted to tell you is i'm not a huge fan of boost controllers mainly because they're illegal here but basically what happens right is you have this line here which is your positive pressure going to your wastegate right so when this wastegate spring pressure is overcome by the boost pressure the wastegate actuator will open and then force the gas out the wastegate and down into the exhaust bypass in the turbo. That's how that works, right? So one cheeky little trick that you can do, which I'm a huge fan of because I like simple mods and I like keeping it as simple as possible and legal and stealthy as possible. What you can do is you just keep these lines on here as factory, use your factory lines. This wastegate here, you can just unbolt it there and there and replace it with one that's the desired PSI that you want to run, right? So this one here I think is about a 10 PSI factory wastegate. So I want to run 14.7 PSI, one bar. So what I'm going to do is order one of these offline, it's about 100 bucks, bolt it on, and then it just plugs straight in its factory and no one ever really knows. There's nothing to give it away. What that means is you're going to have 14 PSI on full boost. So the way to then have this boost controlled is to basically just use your right foot. Use your throttle foot to slow down on your boost. And you just drive it accordingly. That's all you do. So in the dash here, someone had fitted up this unit down here. I don't know if you can see there. Let me adjust the light here. So someone had fitted uh, this unit here, mounted it up on the dash, which looks quite nice, but it's a dead giveaway for a defect. You know, I don't want to run that. So I'm going to leave the boost gauge in there because I want to know what boost I'm running. Nothing wrong with that. It's only a gauge. But I am going to strip out all of this. So what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like and how they've wired it up. All right, so here we go. Let's take off that. Lift up the interior. Now this stage has been manual converted. It's been manual converted really nicely with the R33 box and all of this perfect, beautiful center console, which I'm assuming is out of a 33. Maybe someone will know. Put it in the comments. Let us know. Oh wow, well, here is a mess of wiring. So, look at that. That goes off to that uh, Gretti boost controller. And it looks like they've just taken the power from the back of the cigarette lighter. Now, I did have a bit of a problem where I started this the other day for the very first time, and then I couldn't shut the car off. So I'm pulling a lot of this out to see if we can find the dodgy earth or the cross feed of where it's back feeding into the maybe the um, ECU. I was told by the guy I bought this from that the flex fuel sensor had been wired in potentially to the ECU but not hooked up. So that wiring as well as taking out the taking it out that controller out will be able to help me chase down and simplify with what's going on in the wiring before we start further troubleshooting. Video. We're gonna start it Dad. it's uh, ready to go. Still doesn't shut off though. Well we don't know that. But... Oh well yeah it might. 
We're about to find out. Is the pin out ready to go? <laughs> yeah, if you stop it, just pull the air. Right, here we go. Here's the first official start. What? I can't wait all day. Here's the, here's the first official start of this thing being uh, probably run with the full fluids and bloods and everything in it. And away we go. Huge thanks to Dan. It's, uh, called, it's called a wet start. You'd know all about them, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friday nights for the stage. Yeah. 